Hey, what's up? Alex here. Today, I'm going to share with you which keyboard and mouse setup I use for gaming and which ones for work. If you have been following this channel, you probably already know what I use for work since they appear quite frequently in my videos. This is my first time reviewing keyboards. I'm not going to pretend I'm a keyboard enthusiast. In fact, I'm far from one. But I'm always interested to check out what my friends and colleagues are using. So I'm not that particular in the mechanical switch sound, the touch and feel of the keycaps, this sort of stuff. I'm more into comfort, aesthetics, and special features, be it hardware or software, which is what I'm going to focus more in this video. Before that, I'd like to quickly introduce the sponsor for today's video, which is right behind me. This is the Lyra Floor Lamp by Govi. It has a minimalist and futuristic design, and because of how the base is designed, this can be put not only at corners, but also just facing any walls. It uses the RGB IC technology, where IC stands for independent control, meaning you are able to set multiple colors on a single strip. Not only that, it supports warm white and cool white as well. So if you prefer like a clean minimalist kind of look, you can set it up this way. Within the Govi Home app, you are able to customize the color combi you want. Music mode allows you to have the color changing according to sound rhythm, and you can also DIY something you like. It supports both Google and Alexa voice assistants, but if you are not into smart home, it does come with a remote control and built-in multiple scenes inside with just one button press. Overall, I think having floor lamps in the house to provide some accent lighting really makes the place look more interesting. So the Lyra is able to give you that flexibility, be it for the minimalist look, or if you're gaming and like to set some RGB mood to go with it. For more information on Lyra, make sure you check out the link down below. Personally, I really like this and you're gonna see this very often in all my talking headshots. Alright, back to the video, let's check out my gaming setup first. This is the ASUS ROG Claymore 2, their flagship and premium range of gaming keyboard. My requirement is a 65% or TKL keyboard which means no numpad controls and must be wireless but my other half wanted a full 100% keyboard though. So when I saw the ROG Claymore 2, I instantly want it because it fits exactly to our situation. The biggest selling point of this keyboard is the removable numpad which can be attached to either side of the keyboard so now you can have a few configurations set up. TKL which gives you more space allowance at the mouse area, your standard traditional 100% keyboard with numpad at the right and then if you prefer the numpad to be at the left hand side which is good for FPS and MMO games, very quick access to macros and also media controls which is super nice. The downside is if you're using it as a TKL then you lose the media controls. The packaging also includes a very high quality wrist rest, it's magnetic with rubber feet as well so it's nicely secured to the keyboard. The mechanism to attach the keyboard and numpad together works great. You might have some difficulty initially but once you get the hang of it, the attaching and removing becomes very smooth. You can have the keyboard wired or wireless. Benefit of running wired is you will have a USB pass through, so you can connect like a controller or mic here when you are gaming. But of course, I hate seeing cables and I want wireless. I would say there is only a few wireless 100% gaming keyboard choices out there. The Claymore 2 has a 4000 million power battery inside, and Azul says you can get 144 hours with lighting off and 43 hours with lighting on. Supports fast charging with USB Type-C to Type-C connection that takes about 200 minutes and for normal charging 400 minutes. So for me, I'll just leave it overnight to charge when the battery is low. Very useful feature for the wireless keyboard is you have some sort of battery life indicator on the keyboard. Okay, now let's talk about build quality. This feels really solid and premium with that aluminium front plate. You have thick rubber feet which is not going to snap easily even at the numpad. When you touch the keys this way and try to shake it, you will realize this is wobble free which is going to give you a very good typing experience. If you remove the keycap, you will see the keys are secured with these latches at the four corners. It comes with their own ROG RX switches. You can either choose the blue which is the clicky type or if you prefer linear like me, then get the red one. Let's have a quick sound test with my red switches. Overall, the typing experience for me is good, no complaints from the both of us. As for the software, I will talk about it later together with the mouse since I am also using an ASUS ROG mouse, the Chakram. For me, I always like to use the same brand of mouse and keyboard for that consistent look, switching from my previous full Razer to full ROG now. Most of the people like to pick those super light mouse for gaming and that makes sense if you are playing mainly FPS games. For us, we mainly play MMORPG so we prefer mouse with some weight to it so that it still feels good for normal usage outside game. 
This is my favorite type of mouse design now with that ergo shape and a fin sticking out for you to rest your thumb on it. This mouse has so many customizable features which I really don't know where to start. For your RGB lighting, it is not only placed at your user scroll wheel and right in the middle which your hand is covering them most of the time, but also at the front part of the mouse which I really like. For the logo part, you can see that it looks very different from the other mouse because the light is coming out from the inside. So it creates this kind of blurry effect. If you are creative, you can design something yourself by changing to this clear badge which comes as part of the packaging. One big differentiator of this mouse is that it comes with a joystick which I feel is a little bit gimmicky. You can change it to a short or long version or just simply cover it if you don't intend to use it. Personally, I hardly use this joystick because it kind of forces me to go into the claw grip in order for my thumb to have good control of the joystick. It is also programmable but note that it might not work for every games and you probably need to do some in-game button configuration to utilize it. I find it very useful to just treat it as just 4 macro keys doing up, down, left, right which means you can actually set it like a sideways scrolling. Not bad to have a push to talk here as well. What else you can change is the click switches. By default, inside is the Omron blue switches but it comes with a pair of grey ones so again depends on your preference. Can't let you feel it but I can give you a quick sound test comparison. In terms of connectivity, then of course you always have the wired option. For wireless, either Bluetooth or via the dongle which has its own compartment for travel. Oh, and it also comes with a travelling pouch in the packaging if you need to carry it around. Same as the Claymore 2 which supports fast charging and Azul says it can give you 12 hours of game time with just 15 minutes of fast charging. It also supports wireless Qi charging which is a nice to have feature. So I can simply leave it this way to charge on its own. For the technical specs, you can set up to 16,000 dpi which you can easily adjust on the fly with the dpi button underneath and the scroll wheel without going to the software. Lastly, talking about the software, I have a better user experience with the Armory Crate versus the Razer Synapse. Inside the app, you can set the devices to Aura Sync, setting the macro keys for both the Claymore and Chakram is very straightforward. Pick the RGB lighting effect if you want and you also have some setting options for the power. Then you also have your macro recorder function here to do my favorite software automation. So overall, where I recommend these two products, I really like them but I don't feel it's for everybody especially if you're on a budget. The Claymore 2 keyboard retails at 429 SGD which is similar to the Logitech G915 but of course without the removable numpad which is so unique to the Claymore series. Another good option you can consider is the RG Falcon, a compact 65% keyboard which I think is very value for money. Next for the Chakra mouse, if you're a hardcore FPS gamer then you'll most likely go with those super light mouse. This is positioned at a premium price range of 219 SGD which is actually a good alternative to the offering from Razer and Logitech especially if you like all the customization features. Alright, now let's talk about my setup for work and productivity. I'm going with the very famous Logitech Master Series, the MX Keys and the MX Master 3. The MX Keys has a very minimalist design, kind of similar to the Apple Magic Keyboard. This is not my first time using such low profile keyboard, used to have the Logitech K750 Solar Keyboard pretty long ago. This keyboard is so low that I don't think you need to buy the wrist rest at all. It is a 100% keyboard which is what I want for maximum productivity. What I like about the keys is you can see that most of them have a round concave design matching the shape of your fingertip which really improved the whole typing experience for me. However, there's no adjustable height, everything is fixed so it might not suit you but for me, I think it's just nice. For keyboard use for work, I prefer something quiet or almost silent so that during a conference call, I can keep my mic on, do my stuff and people in the call won't hear my keyboard typing sound which is really annoying. So for that, mechanical switches are out for me. There's still some sound from these tactile switches and here is a quick sound test preview for you. The keyboard supports both the Logitech Wireless Unified Receiver and Bluetooth. Able to connect up to 3 devices with a single key for each of them, you are able to quickly do the switching. How these keyboards help to save battery is with the smart lighting feature. There are sensors around the keyboard, so whenever your hand is near, it will light up very nicely and when your hand is away, the light is off to save battery. The battery is able to last you more than a week, about 10 days from Logitech with the smart lighting on and 5 months with no light. Going to the mouse, I feel like there is no need to talk much about it because there are already so many YouTube video reviews for it. So let me jump straight to what I like about this. First is the design. I'm so used to the ergo shape and the fin below for thumb resting which is also why I like the RLG Chakram for gaming. The mouse is one of the heaviest out there which gives you very nice precise control and stability. As for comfort, it's really a personal preference, might be a little bit for people with small hands. 
Next is the scroll wheel at the top that automatically shifts from line by line to free spinning depending on your scroll speed. And a side scroll wheel which is so useful for my video editing on Premiere Pro and also in Excel when dealing with big spreadsheets. Similar to the MX keys, you can pair up to 3 devices and standard USB-C charging which can last you about 2 months is awesome. One of the best thing about the MX series mouse is that they allow you to use it literally on any type of surface including glass, paper or leather. Very good for travelling use. But of course, it don't make sense to bring around the MX Master 3 because of its size, so I bring around the MX anywhere instead. And lastly, my most favourite feature of the MX Keys and MX Master combination is the Logitech Flow, where you can seamlessly control multiple computers by simply moving the mouse cursor over and the keyboard will switch over automatically. You can't drag and drop files, but you can do a copy and paste which is really amazing. I find the Logitech Flow super useful, supports both Windows and Mac, and I don't think you can find this feature from a mechanical keyboard. So conclusion, where I recommend it? For the mouse, 100%, but if you have small hands or you like a different colour, then you might want to consider the MX Anywhere which does come with pink and white as well. Many people go with the MX Master 3 but a different keyboard because they prefer mechanical switches. If that's the case, I recommend the Any Pro 2 if you like it compact or the Iconix 96% layout which is really really nice. The MX Keys and Master 3 has the same price, both retails at 169 HD, but always keep a lookout for discounts and coupons at Shopee and Lazada. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed my first attempt of a product review on keyboards and mouse. If you'd like to check them out, I'll put the links for you in the description down below. Personally, I really like to watch this type of content on YouTube, so I'm really having fun doing one myself. Thumbs if you like this video to give some support. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!